Here we have a GraphQL Yoga server. We have some type definitions for a post that contains the ID, title and body. And here we have the query posts that return a list of posts. If you've worked with the schema first approach before, you're probably wondering where the resolvers are. Well, here we could just add a simple array that returns a resolvers. Then we head on over to graphical, make a request and get all of our posts. Job done. But actually I want to resolve the data here for our query from an external API. Here we have some example JSON data that's coming from a third party API. We want to take these results and make a request when the user executes a query and return these in the shape of the posts in our GraphQL schema. To do this, we're going to be creating a custom directive called REST. So let's go ahead and remove our resolvers. And what we want to be able to do here is provide a URL to the directive REST. And here we'll insert the endpoint for our example POST API. So at this point, we're declaring this custom directive, passing in the argument URL, and then the actual value of that URL. But right now, this directive is going to do nothing. It's certainly not going to resolve anything. So let's start by creating a custom directive inside of our type definition. So using the keyword directive, we can type rest. Then we can pass that all important URL argument, which will be string. Then we need to define where this directive can be used. And we only want this to be used on the field definition. So we'll specify that here. This field definition then can be used here. We've already installed the GraphQL tools schema package, but we're also going to need to install the utilities package from GraphQL tools, as well as Undici for making a request to that API. So instead of the terminal, let's now go ahead and install the required packages. We'll install GraphQL tools slash utils and then Undici. Make sure to install GraphQL if you haven't already. Now both packages are installed, let's go ahead and import some things. First, we'll need to get the map schema function. Then we'll also get directive and map a kind from the utilities package of GraphQL tools. Then let's go ahead and import fetch from Undici. Lastly, we're going to handle some errors and we need to work with the GraphQL schema. So let's go ahead and import the GraphQL schema type here and GraphQL error. We've got everything now imported that we need to use to go ahead and create our transformer for working with the rest directive. Let's create the function rest schema transformer this function will take in one argument, which will be of the type GraphQL schema, and we'll call this schema, and then we'll return the map schema, which returns a GraphQL schema. So the first argument that we'll pass here will be schema, and then the second argument here will be the schema mapper. Here we want a map inside of our schema for the object field, so we can use mapper kind and then select object field. We'll pass a function for this mapper kind object field. Instead of this function for our object field, we'll create a new const and we'll call this rest directive. Here we're going to use get directive, then we'll pass it the schema, the current field config, and then we'll search for rest. And if all is good, we'll grab the first. So now we're going to work on the assumption that there is a rest directive. If the above declaration for rest directive is truthy, then inside of here we can go ahead now and destructure that URL argument from the rest directive. Then inside of here, we can call field config and we can see here that this is a GraphQL field config option type. And if you've configured a field before, you'll know that this resolve function works similar to that of the resolvers pattern that we looked at before at the very beginning of the video. So here we're going to declare a custom async resolver and here we'll await fetch, then we'll pass in that URL and then when this resolves, we'll get that response. We'll first make a check to see if this response is actually okay. And if it's not, we'll go ahead and throw a new GraphQL error. And we'll go ahead and return that we couldn't fetch from the URL and we'll return the error code. But if everything is okay, we'll go ahead and return res.json. Finally, we'll go ahead and return the new field config. Now, all that's left to do is take this rest schema transformer and then where we pass our schema to a server, we then need to pass this as a function and then we can pass in our current schema. And now when we run the server and make a request, we'll map through the schema and for this, we'll update the field resolver when this rest directive is true. So let's go ahead and start the server and see what this looks like in the browser. And now when we make a request, the response is resolved from that JSON example API. Now, if we take a different set of JSON results for things like photos, where we have a title, URL, and a thumbnail URL, we can then transform this into our GraphQL schema and using that same rest directive, we can reduce the code that's needed to make those external fetch calls to this API. So back inside of the schema here, we'll go ahead and declare a new photo. A photo will have an ID of the int scalar type. It will also have a title of the type string. We'll also have a URL of string and we'll also have that thumbnail URL. Then if we make a new query to return the list of photos, 
We can then update the URL to fetch the photos resource. Now, back inside of Graphical, we can make a request to fetch the photo ID, title, URL, and thumbnail URL. And here we have the results returned from that API using the single rest directive. We haven't had to update anything in our resolver code because we're using all of the code that we had previously written inside of the resolver for the rest directive.